Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video on the Mindstorm Minecraft server development series. In this video, I'm going to teach you guys how to save the world and also how to use the scheduler. Up to this point, you may have realized that whenever we stop our Mindstorm server and we boot it back up, the world is reset. So it doesn't save anything in our world, okay? That's not good, right? Because usually you would want your world to save. Maybe sometimes you don't, but I think it's a nice thing to have. So I'm going to show you guys how you can save your world and also how to use the scheduler so that you can schedule tasks. And we'll talk more about that in a second. So to do it, you just do instance container dot save chunks to storage. So that's all you got to do. But of course, it doesn't make sense to call it just, you know, within the main method like this, because basically we would start up the server, load the world and then instantly save it. That doesn't make a lot of sense. We should probably save the world you know, every so often um, as the, you know, the game is going on or when the server stopped. And you could do all of that using the scheduler. So that's why I'm sort of combining these two concepts here. So to use the scheduler, we can do var scheduler is equal to Minecraft server dot get scheduler manager. So the schedule manager is how you can go ahead and schedule things. The first thing that we could schedule, we can do scheduler dot and we could do build shutdown task. So as the name implies, this is a task of code that will run whenever the server shuts down, which is perfect for our use case. We want some code to run whenever the server stops. So this is asking for a runnable, and you can represent a runnable with a lambda, just like most things. So you can control space to autocomplete that, open that up. And now any code inside of here will run whenever the server is shutting down, okay? So let's start by just printing out a message. Uh, the server is shutting down. And now we'll go ahead and save our instance. So we can do instance container dot save chunks to storage. And that's all you got to do. So a task is just really a piece of code. And we're going to talk more about, you know, how to schedule tasks and stuff like that in a second. But in this case, we're using the scheduler manager from Mindstorm to build a shutdown task that will run this code whenever the server shuts down. And what it's doing here is saving our instance to a file so that we can load it up in the future. Everything will be saved. Okay, so let's go ahead and test this out before we do anything else, just to see what that looks like. Okay, so I'm on the server now. And the easiest way to test this is just to break a few blocks and then stop the server. And then when we come back, let's make sure that the, the blocks are still broken, okay? That way we'll know if it actually saved or not. So let's make a little cross there. And we'll stop the server now by just closing it here. Now I was having trouble testing this because for some reason when I stop it here, instead of going into the normal like shutdown procedure, it's canceling it and like, it's basically killing it and I don't know why it's doing that. So a way that we can test this out is just by building it to a jar file, which we learned about last episode, and then we can stop it using that and it won't, you know, do whatever it's doing here. So that's fine. It'll just take a little more effort. So we just go here and then we want to do the shadow jar thingy. So run that task and that will build our jar file for us. I think it's good that we're doing this anyway, so we can get more practice building a jar file. So once that's done, we can go here to libs and we'll open this back up. And you can see that I still have my script here. Um, so we could use that. But of course, since we have a new jar file, we need to replace this first one here. So we can delete that one and then rename this first one or this new one to server.jar. And now we can run it. So double click. And now our server is running. Perfect. And then now if we come back to here and we go ahead and join the server, we can now make some changes to the world. We'll make another little cross thingy majiggy. Okay, and now here to stop the server, we can do control C. You can see that it automatically stopped it. It said stopping Mindstorm server. The server is shutting down, which is, which is our message that we put. The Mindstorm server stops successfully. So you can control C again to kill that. Now, if you look in the same folder that the jar file was just ran, you can see that we have this world folder now, which is the world. It actually saved it. So we go inside of that, we have a region folder. And this has all the region information, just, you know, all the block information that we want to save for that world. Pretty cool. If you know anything about world saving in Minecraft, you'll notice that there's no player data or anything like that. Mindstorm does not save that, okay? So it only saves the actual block information about the world, nothing else. And world is just the default name for a Minecraft world. I'll show you guys how to customize the name of the world in just a minute here. So if we go ahead and start our server back up, let's try joining again and see if our world is still there. And boom, look at that. It saved it, so that's a great sign as well. So if we just come back to the code now, I wanna show you guys how you can save all the instances on the server because, I mean, currently we're just saving the instance, like just the single instance that we have, but potentially in a more advanced server, you may have multiple instances. So if you wanna just get all of them and save all of them, you can. Um, all we gotta do is use the instance manager for that. So we can do instance manager, and this has all the instances within it. So get instances, 
and then you could do for each since it's a list that it's giving you. And for each of the instances, you can go ahead and do instance dot save chunks to storage. And then you could also simplify that if you want to. So that will do the exact same thing, except that it's doing it for each of the instances on the server that you have loaded. So it'll automatically save everything for you. That is how you can use the Mindstorm scheduler manager to use a build shutdown task to save the world when the server shuts down. What you can also do is have a repeating task, repeating task to continually save the world. Because it doesn't necessarily make sense to only save the world when the server shuts down. Maybe that's something that you want, but uh, with most Minecraft servers, the world is going to be saved every so often, just so that if the server crashes or anything like that, and it's not able to run the shutdown logic, it can still have a recent version of the world saved on a file persistently, okay? So I think it's important to have that as well in this Mindstorm server that we have. And with this, we can also learn more about the Scheduler Manager, which is a tool you can use to build repeating tasks within uh, your Mindstorm servers, okay? So we can do stuff like scheduler. Dot, and you have all these methods here available to you. The first one I'll teach you guys about is the build task method. This one is very simple, and as the name implies, it allows you to build a task. And again, a task is just a piece of code, a runnable, um, that can be repeating or not repeating, stuff like that, okay? So we're going to do scheduler.buildTask, and this is asking for another runnable, so we're going to do control space to make a lambda out of that. And within here, we can put the code that's going to run. So we're going to say saving all instances, dot, dot, dot. And then we could use the same code that we're using up here when we shut down the server to save all of the instances on the server. And after that method, you can call more methods. So you can set a delay. You can tell it if you want to repeat it. You can set execution type. And then finally, you could call schedule. So schedule is what is actually going to schedule this task that you built here. But let's go ahead and configure some settings for it, okay? So the first thing that I want to do is do repeat. So repeat is just telling it how often you want this task to repeat. So you could do like every 30 seconds or every minute, whatever you think is necessary for whatever task you're creating. I think for something as important as saving the world, we'll do every 30 seconds, okay? So to this method, if you do control P, you have a few different options here. You could do a task schedule, a duration, or a time in a temporal unit. If we do the bottom one, you could do a time like 30, and then I need the unit of the time. So we can do time unit dot, and you have all these units here. So seconds, milliseconds, nanoseconds, server tick, hour, day, all that stuff, okay? So we're gonna do second. And now we just have a task here that runs every 30 seconds. And yeah, it just goes on forever until you kill it, essentially. You can also add a delay. Delay is just telling it how long to wait before starting the task for the first time. So you could have the server start up, and then this code runs here, right? And then you could have it wait like two hours or one minute or 30 seconds or whatever unit of time you want to wait. And then it will go ahead and save the world for the first time. And then every 30 seconds, it will do it again over and over and over, okay? So I'm going to set it to one minute. So time unit dot minute. If you want to do duration, you can. That's another option, right? So we can do duration, dot, and then you have all these options here. So of milliseconds, from, of days, of hours, of minutes, nanoseconds. So you have a lot of options here as well. So I'm going to say of minutes, one. So now we are building a task that will start after one minute and then repeat every 30 seconds. And yeah, now we should always have a pretty recent version of our world saved to our file system, okay? So let's go ahead and uh, run this now. All right, so I'm going to start the server back up. I'm going to go ahead and join, and then while the server is running, I'm going to go ahead and monitor the uh, the logging messages here because we have it printing stuff. So after one minute, we should get the initial message of the world being saved. So I'll just wait for that. There we go. So it says saving all instances, and then now after 30 seconds, it should print out another message. There we go. Saving all instances again and it's just going to repeat every 30 seconds. So this capability here is really cool. You can now have repeating tasks or just chunks of code that run every so often. You can configure them really nicely using this API as well. Um, this is going to be very powerful for, you know, all kinds of different servers that you're going to be creating because having the capability of repeating stuff over and over is pretty essential. And not even just repeating tasks. If you just want to create a task that just runs once, you could do that. You just simply remove the repeating part and then it just runs the task once after one minute. You know, stuff like that as well is very important. The documentation for this says that the scheduler manager run these tasks synchronously, not asynchronously, meaning that it should schedule them and run them on the main server thread. But with my understanding with these methods that we're calling, like save chunks to storage, it returns a completable feature, which is usually used with asynchronous operations. And we also know that Mindstorm was made with um, multi-threading in mind. So I believe, I could be wrong about this, um, I believe that even though these tasks themselves are scheduled on the main server thread, 
when it does stuff like save chunks or storage, it's going to be done asynchronously so it doesn't freeze up the server. I could be wrong, but if anyone has any, any more information about that, please let me know. I would love to be sure about that, okay? So using build tasks is just one way that you can create tasks using the Mindstorm scheduler manager. Another way is with the submit task method. So there's just two different ways pretty much. So scheduler.submit task. So in this case, we're submitting a task. So it's asking for a supplier, which is kind of similar to the runnable that we're using above, except that it expects a return of task schedule. So let me show you what I mean by that. So control space to autocomplete, open that up. And then now we could, you know, just have like normal, just the code that we're going to run in this task. So I'm just going to say peanut butter. And then the return is just the actual settings for this task here. So instead of using the builder and building it using a method here or methods, um, you just return it with the information that you want to use. So you could do task schedule dot, and then you could tell it the schedule or how often you want to repeat this task. Okay. For example, you could do duration. And then you can set a duration by doing like 20 and you have all these different options here as we saw before and i'm going to show you guys server tick so a tick in minecraft is the unit of time that minecraft uses one tick is equal to one twentieth of a second but an easy way to think about this is that one second is equal to 20 ticks luckily my seems to make it easier for you because we're dealing with instead of ticks here we're dealing with you know you could specify a duration of any unit of time which is really cool or time unit um, but in other APIs like Bucket or Spigot, for example, it likes to use ticks exclusively. So you have to know what ticks are. But I think even though they make it easy for you when scheduling these tasks here, you should also know what a tick is just for the future and in general, if you're going to become a Minecraft server developer. So again, a tick is just a unit of time for Minecraft servers. The server keeps ticking and one second is equal to 20 ticks. Okay. So right here, since I set the duration to 20 ticks, this means that this is a task that will repeat every single second, okay? So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, run it just back in the IDE since that's easier and faster. Let me go ahead and... Oh, I need to make sure that I stop the server that's running in my console, right? So just kill that. And then now go back and restart it here. If you just check the console here, you can see that it's printing out peanut butter over and over and over every single second. So it's working perfectly. There's so many methods you can call upon the scheduler manager, but... One other one that I want to show you is schedule next tick. And this is just a way of making a task that runs, you know, in the next tick. Okay. It's pretty self-explanatory. So if you just open that up, you know, complete the Lambda, this code here will print out, you know, that message on the next tick. All right. This one's not repeating though. It's not going to run like every single tick. This is just a way of scheduling something for the next tick. So you can see that it prints it right there as soon as we restarted the server. And that's pretty much it. That's how you can schedule tasks using the schedule manager. Very important thing, like I said, that we'll be using in the future. Another thing that is really important that you can do is whenever you build these tasks or you, you know, call submit task or whatever, usually it's going to return a task where you do store in a variable. So we could do something like var task is equal to that. Same for this one. So var task two is equal to that. And this is just a way of taking this task that could be currently running on your server or about to be run in the future and giving it to you as a variable so that you can cancel it if you want to or just get information about it. So we can do task dot and we have a few methods here like cancel. That's probably the most important one because at some point you don't you don't usually want these tasks to run forever. Right. Um, except for maybe the one that is going to save the world. But but for the most part, you probably don't want them to run forever. So at some point you want to cancel them. So that's how you would do that. You can also see if they're still alive and uh, the owner of it and stuff like that. So, so just knowing that you can store, so just knowing that you can have it as a task object is pretty cool. And that's all I want to show you guys for scheduling. The last thing I want to show you guys is how you can specify um, a name for the world, a custom name for the world. So currently, when we create our world as a instance, we're using you know the instance manager to do instance manager dot create instance container, and we pass nothing into this. But if you want to, you could do new anvil loader this is just the default one that is used by um mindstorm but you can provide your own in the future once we get into more advanced world generation you could provide your own loader if you want to or someone else's loader um, but what you can see here is that if you do new loader and pass that into a create instance container you can also specify the path of where the world is going to be so let's just say that we do potato this will basically say that whenever the server starts up it will try to find the folder with the name potato and just whatever directory this is running in. So in this case, the jar file that we had was running just, you know, here. So that's why I put the world here. And if it can find it, then that's the world that will be loaded into your server when it starts it as this instance container. 
If it cannot find the world, it will create the folder for you when you save the world, okay? So, for example, I currently do not have a folder named potato. I have no world named potato. So when I start the server up, it's going to create one in memory, right? But then when I call save chunks, save chunks of storage, it will save that world as a folder named potato. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. That is why we have this world folder here, because that's the default world name, as well as the path. We don't have to have it in the same directory as the jar file. That's just probably customary. You could have it in a subfolder like, you know, maybe something like worlds. And that should save in a subfolder called worlds. And yeah, that's just a simple way that you can customize the world name if you want to do that, okay? That's also important if you want to have multiple worlds or multiple instances. Um, if you load multiple, obviously you need to have different names for each of the different ones. So that's important to know how to do, okay? And yeah, that's it for this video, everybody. I really appreciate all the support, like I said before. And hopefully you guys learned something new in this episode. I think the scheduler manager within MySum is really easy to use and it's pretty awesome. So now you guys should know how to save your world and also schedule tasks and all that fun stuff, okay? Thanks for watching, everybody. So that's it for this video, everybody. I really hope you learned something new. If you liked the video, please hit the like button. And if you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. Make sure to also check the description below for important links to code and other resources. But also really important, join our Discord. We have a big community of over 5,000 programmers, and it's a place where you can find new friends or get help on any code that you're stuck on. If you want to support what I do on this channel, please consider hitting the join button below. And this will allow you to support my channel for as low as $1 a month, but there are different tiers to choose from if you want to. For anyone that becomes a member on my channel, you get a special rank on my Discord server, early access to new videos and you can just see yourself on the screen right now so if that sounds cool to you feel free to join if you don't want to that's fine if you can't that's okay too i really just appreciate you watching the video anyway thank you so much and that's it peace